Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Colorado Rockies franchise. In the last episode, the Rockies got swept in what was kind of an embarrassing fashion against the LA Dodgers, losing 1-13 to in the final game of the series and having some really bad fielding during the last two games of the series. Before we get started with this episode, I wanted to highlight some comments I got on the last episode. At Cole124 said, I love the Sterling Thompson idea, and just Mr. Love said the same thing. Love Love the Sterling Thompson idea. It was fair. And while it may be gimmicky, as long as you don't abuse this idea, it's fair to me. I'm glad you guys liked the idea. I think it makes a lot of sense. We like Sterling Thompson on this channel. He's really a pretty good player that I think could be an integral part of the platoon going forward. Even though he doesn't have the highest potential in the world, he's going to be a solid player for quite a while. And I think it makes a lot of sense to approach him and ask him to change his secondary positions. Alexander said that he loves the new Barry Cohen look. It looks like he settled into the MLB in his more confident this year. That's kind of what I was going for. He looked very much like a child last season, and he still kind of is. I mean, he's only 19 years old, but definitely I think looks quite a bit better this year. And the last comment I'll mention comes from Bro Sam Bo, and he said, this is probably the year that Ade Almador takes over Brendan Rodgers' spot in the infield, and Rodgers gets traded for either a player to fill a hole in the roster or for a decent quantity slash quality of prospects. And I wholeheartedly agree. I'm ready for Amador to take over at either shortstop or second base, probably. Probably. I'm thinking that when that happens, we might move Ezekiel Tovar to play third. I won't change his position to be third base, but he's our best fielder in the infield easily. And I think him playing third makes more sense because he has a stronger arm than Amador. And it's not like Luis Arise or Ahmed Rosario could really play third that well. But the question with Amador, and more importantly, the question with trading Brendan Rodgers, when do we make that happen? Brendan Rodgers will be turning 30 next season. We did sign him to an extension, so we have him through his age 30 season next year, but I do want to trade him away this year, and I definitely could include him in part of that Garrett Crochet trade that I mentioned at the end of the last episode. But how quickly do we make that happen? Do we want it to be super early this season? Do we wait until it's a little closer to the deadline, see how the team is doing, see how Amador's performing at AAA? You guys let me know. But I appreciate the comments. I love reading them and keep them coming. I love the support and I really value your guys input with the franchise. In today's episode, we're going to look to get the Rockies back on track. We have a home series here against the Pirates before we go on another road trip. And let's just kind of play it by ear a little bit this episode. I'm thinking maybe we'll focus on the Cubs series, the Yankees series, or the Giants series, but I just kind of want to see where we're at after simulating a bit. I'm also very eager to see what Chase Dolander can do with his first start of the season, which actually comes against Paul Skeens with the Pittsburgh Pirates. So in game number one against the Pirates, we're in quite the situation here. I'm going to simulate to the end and we lose six to one. The offense cannot do anything of late. Mike Soroka went six and two thirds, only allowing one earned run. I think that should give a victory 90% of the time. And maybe it would have had AJ Minter not given up the two runs he did. Hunter Harvey gave up a run as well and got credited with the loss. You may also notice that Nolan Jones had an error and that allowed two more runs while Hunter Harvey was pitching. What is up with our fielding ability? Nolan Jones, I know, isn't a great fielder. He just has an absolute cannon of an arm. But man, we are losing games off of errors. But also, to be fair, we would have lost this game anyway. Luis Arise still batting at 181. Ahmed Rosario in the low twos. Nolan Jones in the mid twos. Our best bat right now is Brenton Doyle, who's batting a 400. Speaking of which, at least for a little bit, I think I'm going to have Doyle be the everyday center fielder. It was split between him and Fernandez, one against righties and one against lefties. But Doyle is playing very well and Fernandez is playing very poorly. So I'm going to give Doyle the opportunity to prove his worth and play every day at center field, at least for a little while and have Fernandez just kind of be a platoon guy temporarily. And we bounce back against the Pirates. It's a Satchel Page start and we do. Satchel Page always simulates so, so well. Take a look at the Rockies. Ahmed Rosario able to get a hit. Luis Arise with a couple hits. That's what we like to see. Nolan Jones still struggling. No hits today. Did walk once. Barry Cohen with a hit in RBI and two walks. Ezekiel Tovar is playing okay. Alex Verdugo is playing very well, batting a 325. Brendan Rodgers over 300. Basayo to 238. And Doyle still a 384 and got another hit. Satchel Page giving up two earned runs in seven innings pitched. Hey, I will take that every single outing. And now here's one I'm very concerned about. Dole Lander probably needs a good start to get him on track. Let's see what he does. Looks like he probably went five or six 
innings, allowing four earned runs, which isn't the worst. And now we're in a similar situation to the first game in the series where Hunter Harvey has the bases loaded. And I'm going to simulate the Pirates beat the Rockies six to four. So how did Dolander do? Five and two thirds innings, gave up four earned runs, had nine strikeouts, three walks. It's not the best performance, but I'm not going to complain too much about that. I don't think that'll be negative momentum, but it's definitely not positive momentum either. Let's call it neutral momentum. But we lose another series this time to the Pirates. We're seven and eight on the season and the Pirates, not a good team, four and eight. They were two and seven coming into this series. One of our triple A players, Elleris Montero has a shoulder pull, put him on the 10 day and Jack Flaherty is eligible to be reinstated, but he is still injured. We'll just keep him on the 15 day. Michael King about to get a complete game shutout potentially against Arizona. We'll simulate to the end and we still win for nothing. Four hits from Luis Arise. You love to see it. He's definitely getting back on track. Doyle with two more hits is batting a 428 to start the year. Nolan Jones still struggling. 0 for 4 today. A 211 average now. Cohen did not show up. Tovar over a 300. Verdugo still at 300. Rogers has dropped below the 300 mark. Samuel Basayo has been fine. It looks like Brenton Doyle might be our best bat right now. And Michael King, complete game shutout, no earned runs allowed, four walks, nine strikeouts, seven hits. Now it's Johan Oviedo, and we win another one against Arizona, four to one. This time, Nolan Jones gets a couple hits, Luis Arise with two more hits, and Ahmed Rosario with two more hits. So the top of the order doing what they need to do. Brenton Doyle with yet another hit, still batting 400. That's hilarious. And Oviedo, six and a third, only one earned run, seven walks though is really, really bad. Simulated the final game against Arizona and it's a 7-5 victory. So a sweep of the Diamondbacks and we're 10 and 8, two games above 500. Ahmed Rosario with three hits. Nolan Jones gets another hit. Ezekiel Tovar with two hits and four RBI. See, I think him being in an RBI producing spot is really beneficial for him. Barry Cohen drew three walks, by the way. Don't mind that he didn't get a hit then. Soroka, five innings pitched, three earned runs, six walks to no strikeouts. What are we doing? Welcome everybody to Chicago, where the Rockies facing off against Justin Steele and the Chicago Cubs in a very rainy game. We're doing a player lock today. It'll be Satchel Page on the mound, but we are focusing on our boy, Barry Cohen. Justin Steele, not off to a great start. 0-3 in his first three starts. 1-7-7 whip, 7-9-8 ERA. Well, we're in the top of the second and our number four hitter, Barry Cohen, comes up to the plate. Not off to the best start this season, although his numbers are quite similar to what he did in his rookie campaign, which won him Rookie of the Year nods. But I was hoping for more of a breakout from Cohen and first pitch swinging gets it into the outfield. Gets it through the gap in the middle of the infield. And that's a base knock for Barry Cohen. Base knock Barry. Ezekiel Tovar batting a 313 with a nine game hitting streak. We've put him in a good position here with Cohen on base. Tovar is going to fly out it looks like to shallow left. Francisco Mejia is only batting a 148. He's a guy that maybe we should look to trade as well. I think Samuel Basayo can take over as the everyday catcher. Mejia is just supposedly very, very good against lefties. So I play him against lefties, but he's struggling big time as he strikes out here. And now Cohen's leadoff single looking like it's probably not going to amount to much. Although Brendan Rodgers is playing quite well to start the year. So maybe we can get a big hit from him bring Cohen around or at least advance him. That's a grounder onto first, so that's not gonna happen. Steps on the bag and that is the end of the second. We get to play in the field today. There's a runner on third, so gonna need a play here to get us out of the inning. Satchel Page on the mound, wearing the number five this season. And I didn't change anything, so that was just his choice. Here comes the throw from Brendan Rodgers, and there's out number three. No runs allowed for Mr. Page. It is so early in the season that you just have to take all the stats with a grain of salt, right? Like, Brenton Doyle's not going to bat a 400 this season. We know that for sure. Barry Cohen got... Oh, dude, that fastball was just right there, and he just did not get anything on it. Good timing and everything, just missed. Top of the seventh, we're losing one to three now, so need some hits here. Barry... Oh, that was a good one to hit. It's still Justin Steele on the mound, I just noticed. He's only thrown 47 pitches through seven? What are we doing? Am I crazy? Yeah, Justin Steele is the starting pitcher. He's only thrown 48 pitches now 
in seven innings. I guess we're just swinging at everything, this offense. Maybe that's why we're playing so poorly. To be less than 50 pitches with one out in the seventh is so wild as Barry Cohen strikes out looking. I thought that was below the zone. Oh, and look, it's TJ Antone. We tried to get him in the offseason. And look, the game's tied up as well. Barry could hit a homer to take the lead. Barry, come on, man. You're getting on top of these meatballs. You should be crushing these. You got the best power on the team. So now we're in the bottom of the ninth. Bases loaded. It's AJ Minter on the mound who has not been good for us to start the year. Hopefully he doesn't give up the game winning run and we can at least head to extras, get a chance. This is grounded onto Rogers at third. He throws onto Arise playing second and that will end the inning. So we head to extras here in game one against the Cubbies. Michael Tolia pinch runs for Barry Cohen and we are officially out of the game and we end up with a loss. We are unable to score the Tolia run in the top of the 10th, lose in the bottom of the 10th and it's Minter who gets the loss. What were we doing today? We let Justin Steele go super deep into this game. How deep did he end up going? Eight innings pitched, one earned run, four strikeouts, no walks, just zero patience from the Rockies today. Luis arrives with a couple hits. Cohen, of course, had the single at the start of the game. I totally forgot to look at how Satchel Page did. Five and two thirds, three earned runs, seven strikeouts, four walks. I mean, it's not too bad. Welcome to game number two, everybody. It's Chase Dolander on the mound for this one. And that's why I wanted to highlight this game in particular. I think if we can get him off to a hot start, we have a good chance of him performing well in the simulation and hopefully being able to stay up with the big league the whole season. Most of the time when we bring him up to the majors, he struggles and we just have to send him back down to not hurt his development. It's Nestor Cortez, a guy that we targeted in free agency a bit as well. Apparently all of our free agents would rather play for the Cubs. Ahmed Rosario will lead us off in the top part of the first and unlike the game yesterday, I'm gonna try to actually be more patient for the bats. Ahmed Rosario will walk after going full in the count. So that's a good way to start with the patience. Luis Arise batting second. Let me know if you think it would be smarter to have him batting first potentially. I don't know that him batting second matters too much. I just have him there because I know the batting clutch is high. Luis Arise right back up the middle. That'll be a base hit for him. And Rosario will hold up at second as the throw comes into third. Definitely would have beat him there. Two leadoff base runners, though, for the Rockies to start. And that brings up Nolan Jones. Nolan Jones definitely cold to start the year. Only batting in 219. But he was cold to start the year last season as well. And then finished with really excellent numbers. Well, first pitch swinging, and that's going to be the easiest out of the inning, I'm sure. Batting fourth today is Ezekiel Tovar. We gave Barry Cohen the day off, was a bit tired. You'll see Michael Tolia over there at first. So instead, it's Tovar at four, a good RBI producer, and in a position to get some. He'll ground on to third. There's a tag out, and then a force out at second. That was the weirdest double play 5-4 double play, I think that was. I think that was the second baseman covering second base. Well, that sucks. A great way to start the inning and a terrible way to end. Chase Dolander on the mound. He's wearing number 11 this year because that's what he wore in college. So I figured when he comes up to the majors in real life, that's probably what he's going to want to wear as Michael Tolia steps on the bag and Cody Bellinger goes down. Grounder up the middle from Ian Happ, and that'll be the first base hit of the day for the Cubs. Brings up Nico Horner, and oh my god, that was a bad fastball. Dolander having trouble with the fastball early in the game today, which is not a great sign. Tolia makes a diving play. This is going to be close at first, and he's safe. The gentlest toss from Tolia that I've maybe ever seen, and it's ruled a base hit for Nico Horner. I feel like if he just doesn't give it the little lob toss that he did, that is probably an out. Dolander definitely beats him there. That toss was just very slow. Now it's Spencer Torkelson and two on with only one out for Dolander, who's having issues with his fastball. Two, two count for Torkelson. We'll go to the off-speed changeup. It's popped way up. We got Jordan Beck over there and left today against the left-handed pitcher. And that is easy out number two. Swing and a miss on the changeup. Christopher Morell looks silly 
on that one. No runs for the Cubs. So here's Michael Tolia batting 500 to start the year, though I don't think he's had many plate appearances. I wish I could edit his look because he looks quite a bit different in real life than he does in the game, but apparently this game version of him is like his face scan. And I just don't really think it looks that much like him. Plus, Tolia totally in real life has long hair. I can edit his pants, though. He's not wearing pants like this in real life. That's a base knock for Michael Tolia. Gets into the outfield to right. Here's Francisco Mejia. I very, very nearly... No way Tolia gets picked off as I'm saying this. What is he doing? Give me Barry back. What was I even saying? I very nearly put Samuel Basayo in for Mejia today. But Mejia's contact against lefties is in the 90s, and it's like high 90s, 96. Plus, he's got high batting clutch, 72. That's one of the best batting clutch ratings on the team. But if he continues to struggle, I'm definitely going to put Basayo in as just the full-time catcher. He already plays a bit more than Mejia since he plays against righties, as Mejia grounds softly to short, and that should be an easy play for Dansby Swanson. Brendan Rodgers pops one to right, and that is a very quick inning thanks to the Michael Tolia pickoff. Dansby Swanson will walk on a full count. Didn't even flinch a single time during that at-bat. Now it's Kevin Alcantara, who has been with the Cubs for a while. It's just not the name I recognize. I don't know why I forgot to commentate this. I was just dead silent as it happened. Dolander wild pitch on the curveball gets away from Mejia. And Swanson was able to advance to second. And these Cubs batters are not swinging at anything that's close. Finally, we get a swing and a miss from Alcantara. This is a pop-up to shallow center. And Doyle does actually make the play. See, that is one I don't think young Kiel Fernandez gets to. I think that that probably falls in for a base hit. I want to have Doyle be the permanent center fielder so, so bad. And he's proving that he can be so far this year with the high average. But man, does he typically just struggle big time with the bat. He's just such an elite fielder. It's so nice to have him out there. I think, honestly, he's so good as a fielder, we can even justify him being bad with the bat, as long as it's not too horrendous. If he can sit around 200 average, I'm okay with that. Here's Jordan Beck. Speaking of guys with low averages, 133 to start the year. He plays in left field against the left-handed pitching. One of our best power bats against lefties in the whole lineup. Jordan Beck deep to right. I think it's hooking foul. It does. I don't even know if that was deep enough, actually, to be a home run. He was excited about it for nothing. And now Beck will just line out, if you can even call that soft of a hit a line out, 64 off the bat to Morell. And now here's Doyle. He's not batting over 400 still, but it is a 303. And I will happily take that, obviously. Maybe we just teach Doyle how to drag bunt really well. And he just bunts all the time because of his speed. That could be funny. Doyle got a piece of one, but it's not all that deep to left. That'll be the second out of the third. Brings us back to the top of the order for the second time today. Ahmed Rosario, of course, walked in the first. Can he do it again? Or maybe a base hit. And this has a chance to get through. It will not. So Rosario will have to hold up at first. Looked like it was going to be a double off the bat. Instead, it's just a single. But we'll take what we can get. Now it's time for Luis Arise. One for one on the day. As Rosario taking off. It's a hit and run play. And Arise gets it through. That's going to easily score Rosario. And that'll be a stand-up double for Luis Arise. The Rockies strike first. one nothing from the top of our order with two outs in the inning. Which brings up Nolan Jones. Swung on the first pitch with him last time. And it's a very easy out. Let's see if that happens again. Not swinging at that one. 3-1 count to Nolan Jones. Here comes the pitch. And that's way high. And that will walk Nolan to first. Bringing up Ezekiel Tovar. Tovar, pretty deep to right. Right fielder going back, and it's over his head. That's going to score two more runs from Ezekiel Tovar. And he's on his way to 30, wants the triple, as the throw is not great. And Tovar in with a stand-up triple. Two more runs come across for the Rockies, and Tovar extends his hit streak to 11. This is why I love having Ezekiel Tovar in an RBI producing position. One thing to consider, Tovar does actually have higher clutch than Barry Cohen. What if we maybe start putting Tovar at fourth 
permanently in the lineup. By the way, all of this coming with two outs in the inning. A two-out rally for the Rockies, now 3-0 on the Cubs. Cortez at 42 pitches. Here comes the 43rd, and that's high. I bring that up because in the last game, Steele got through seven innings with only 47 thrown when I noticed it. I think he got up to 50 by the time the inning was over. And we're practically already there in the third with Nestor. Count is full for Tolia, who did have a base knock earlier in the game. I think that was in the second inning. And that one's low. So another walk given up by Cortez and Tolia will reach his third walk already today. Which brings up Francisco Mejia, another guy with relatively high batting clutch. Although his batting clutch hurts him against left-handed pitching because it lowers what would be his very high contact rating against lefties. Cortez struggling to find his spots right now. 2-0 against Mejia. And Mejia gets a hold of this one. That's fairly deep to center, but not nearly deep enough. As that will finally end the top of the third. But the Rockies strike first. And they strike for three. All right, Chase Dolander, we gave you a cushion. It's time to settle in. He has no confidence in his curveball right now, which kind of sucks because I think it's his best pitch. That was kind of a hanging slider. Lucky that Bellinger didn't punish. There's out number one. That was kind of a hanging fastball as well, but Brenton Doyle's got some of the best range in the game. It's an easy out number two for Ian Happ. Dolander appears to be settling in a little bit, but I think I jinx it every time I say that, so hopefully not this time. I did jinx it, although it's not as big of a jinx as I was anticipating. I was fully expecting a home run jinx. I'll take a single jinx. That's not the end of the world. That is a grounder to Rogers. We'll go to our eyes at second. That'll end the third. Good inning for Chase Dolander. With one gone in the inning, Jordan Beck will draw a walk. And we have a base runner here in the fourth for Brenton Doyle. By the way, I'll point out in Doyle's attributes, his contact against righties is bad. His contact against lefties is not as bad, but still bad. But his clutch is 54, so it, that's actually not terrible. So theoretically, he would be better in a similar way that Tovar is better in a RBI position. But 54 clutch does not justify batting him like third or something. Such a polarizing player. Sometimes I love him, and other times I absolutely hate him. He makes life hard, is what he does. He's got high potential, elite fielder, just can't hit worth anything. Nestor cannot find the strike zone right now, though. 3-0 count. Ahmed Rosario on deck. And that's ball number four. Could see that from a mile away. And that's another walk for Nestor. His fifth allowed. Rosario is going to get this one through the infield. That could score Jordan Beck. The throw from presumably Bellinger and right, not in time. And a fourth run comes across for the Rockies. Ahmed Rosario first pitch swinging. And gets an RBI, which brings up Luis Arise again. Had an RBI his last time up, which was only an inning ago. Can he get another one here? Check swing. Surely I didn't go. Correct. Actually, a little surprised they haven't pulled Nestor at this point. Clearly, his stuff isn't working. He's missing his locations with all of his pitches. That was a really good one. Never mind. Wow, that was a hanging curveball that Arise got a hold of. And it's going to be another base hit for Luis. And we are going to hold Ahmed Rosario at third. I considered sending him home with his high speed. Better safe than sorry, I think. Another base knock for Luis Arise. And another run comes across for the Rockies. And it's another hanging curveball from Nestor Cortez. And finally, they are pulling him. So maybe I was right not to get... Nestor Cortez, I say that as though I wasn't actively trying to sign him and just got screwed by the Cubs. Coming to the mound now for the Cubs is Anthony DiSclefani. Hopefully I'm saying that last name correctly. So Nestor doesn't even get through four full innings. Three and a third for him as Nolan Jones swings through the circle change. Oh my goodness gracious, Nolan Jones on the second pitch he sees blasts it to center field and that's three count them three more runs for the colorado rockies it's now eight to nothing that's nolan jones first homer on the year he has definitely been struggling to start the season but he's gotten off to slow starts before i believe that he can bounce back and he does in a big way here well chase if you don't win this game i don't know what game you will win to be honest with you 
Strike three swinging on Christopher Morell. Grounder to second. Not the easiest play for a rise, but he gets it done. And that's out number two against Dansby Swanson. Ooh, kind of a fastball right down the middle as Jordan Beck has a long run, but gets there as Alcantara goes down. And that is out number three. So four pretty easy innings of work for Chase Dolander. And he's got himself a nice little cushion. I'm sure he feels comfortable. So I'll do some quick managing. We'll kind of turn this into a little bit of a player lock for the rest of the game with Dolander. I think obviously we've seen a ton of offense. Chase 60 pitches deep. A little under half his energy. Could probably go the fifth and the sixth, I'd imagine. Well, I guess we'll wait and see if he can. He does have 80 stamina, which is some of the best on the team. Rounder back up the middle. Tough play for Ezekiel Tovar, but if anyone can make it, it's him. This one is going to get past a rise, and that is a base knock for Matt Shaw. Nolan Jones taking his sweet time throwing that back in. Grounder up the middle should be a very standard double play, and it is against Cody Bellinger. So another quick inning for Chase Dolander. Really, the only hits he's given up have been soft singles. It's been a really good day for Dolander. Fast forward to the sixth. Dolander's still going. No more runs added for the Rockies. And that is a walk from Dolander. Starting to miss his spots with the fastball a little bit again. His breaking pitches are really just not hitting their marks today. His slider hasn't been great. His curveball hasn't been great. His fastball was bad in the first inning, but has been good since. And now he's losing it a little bit again. That's a broken bat pop-up. Totally underneath it. Here's out number one. Oh, man. That was cracked to left. That's over Jordan Beck's head. Needs to get it in quickly or it's going to score a run for the Cubs. They do send the runner around. Tovar's got a pretty good arm to Mejia at the plate. And the runner is out. A good relay from the Rockies. Back to Tovar to Mejia. And down he goes. Two gone. No runs given up by Dolander just yet. That was easily the best contact we've seen against Dolander today, though. As that is a misplaced fastball for sure. Swing and a miss from Morell. And another strikeout for Dolander. That might be the end of his day. His energy is not looking too, too hot at this point and they're starting to make good contact he's missing his spots a little bit more maybe we'll let him face one batter at a time that's exactly what we're going to do here in the seventh dolander will just face a single batter at a time a base hit or a walk will end his day well that's a big time base hit that one's going to get over the wall just completely left a fastball right down the middle dansby swanson crushes it and the cubs get a run yeah, I always leave them in one batter too long, I feel like. But I, he deserved the opportunity. It was 8 nothing. He pitched so well. Really good day from Chase Dolander. Can't say I'm disappointed with a one-run performance. And we'll bring in Hunter Harvey. Went ahead and simmed to the end of the game. And would you look at the score? It's 15-2. to The Rockies catch a dub. What a game offensively. Been struggling a lot so far this year with the offense. But we got a huge explosion today. Hopefully we didn't burn all of our offensive capabilities on one game, though. A victory for Chase Dolander. Player of the game is Nolan Jones, which is an interesting decision considering Luis Arise went four for six. Here's the box score, three hits from Rosario, four from Arise with two RBIs. Jones with the one hit, three RBIs, two walks. Tovar, four RBIs. Every single player got at least one hit, including Michael Tolia. Mejia got a couple, Rogers got one with an RBI, Beck got one, and Doyle with one and an RBI. And that RBI from Doyle was a home run. His second on the year, currently more home runs than Nolan Jones. Winning pitcher, of course, Chase Dolander. Gave up one earned run in six innings pitched with four strikeouts and two walks. Not a bad performance. Game number three against the Cubs. One to one is the series score. Can the Rockies get a series dub after a 15 to two performance in the second game 
off the back of a great pitching performance by Chase Dolander. We've got a weird lineup card today offensively. Everyone was tired, so we're given a number of guys a day off. Doyle is off. Jones is off. And Tovar, not out in the field, is DHing today as he's gassed as well. We'll face off against Nick Pavetta today, 0 for 2 to start the season with a 13.8 ERA and a 2.49 whip. Are you sure this is the guy you want out here? So here's our wacky, goofy lineup card for today. It's Rosario and Arise at second and at short. Tovar, like I said, is gassed, but he's playing so well offensively right now. I wanted to have him in the lineup still, so he's DHing. Toen is back in the lineup. Verdugo out and left. Fernandez in in center. Tolia, who can play right field and left field as well as first base, will be in right. And then it's Thompson at third and Basayo at catcher. It's also Jackie Robinson day, so you'll see everybody wearing the number 42. Grounder back up the middle, goes off of Pavetta's hand, and then he makes the play. What an interesting series of events there, out number one. Oh, he looks a little shaken up. It hit him right in the glove hand. I can't imagine he'd be coming out of the game for that. And he is not. You might not believe me, but I did try to swing at that. I got bailed out by an animation. Three balls, no strikes due to a little help. It's Tovar on deck. And Arise fouls this one off. Strike three on Arise. That's a great location on the fastball. Tovar pops this one a mile high. And that will be an easy out number three. Michael King on the mound for us just came off of a complete game shutout, I think was his last start. 296 ERA 152 whip. Not terrible numbers, but not the best to start the season. I love Michael King's circle change. It has so much movement on it as it strikes out Dansby Swanson. Rounder on to second. Ahmed Rosario's there. Wow, he threw that with his entire life behind it. Am I crazy, or did he throw that really, really hard? Grounder on to Barry Cohen at first. And there's the final out of the inning. Oh, goodness. Christopher Morel high and deep to left center. Fernandez just has to look up at it. And that's the first run of the ball game. Comes off of the bat of Christopher Morel, his fourth on the season. And that went a long, long ways. I think that was the first four-seamer I'd had King throw all day, and of course it missed its spot. Grounder back to Michael King, who makes a play and gets it to Barry Cohen out number two. That was a hanging curveball, and that's going to get into the outfield. Tolia will have to chase it down, and that's going to be an easy double for Matt Shaw. Does not advance to third. So King needing to get out of this inning before it gets any worse. It's not too bad so far. I mean, solo homers happen here and there. Grounder on the sinker to Barry Cohen, and that'll end the second. So the solo shot by Christopher Morell means that the Rockies are down by one. Sterling Thompson, a guy we haven't seen a lot so far this season. I mean, it's only the second episode of the new season, but obviously he was the starting third baseman a year ago. He's kind of lost that spot now, despite having a good year last year. Would probably play a decent amount more once Brendan Rodgers is traded, but for now, relegated to the position he's in, which is grounding out in the top of the third and being kind of just a backup infielder. Oof, I don't know how that's ball four, but Samuel Basayo draws a walk on what was kind of just a painted slider. Ooh, Ahmed Rosario, deep to left, it's foul. Oh, it fooled me, I thought that was gone. He does not have a lot of power, so I was very surprised to see a no doubt home run. He got the same pitch again and he just pops it straight up to straightaway center field. How dare you, Ahmed Rosario? Fool me in such a way. Oh my God, a filthy curveball from Michael King strikes out Andy Thomas. Dansby Swanson gets one to hit and punishes Michael King with a slow roller that gets all the way to the wall. Will he head to 30? Will Rosario tries to throw him out and it's just a touch late. Dansby Swanson in with a triple. A runner on third for Ian Happ. Only one gone in the inning, so a ball in play probably scores a run. 
We also don't have our typically huge arms in the outfield today with Fernandez and Tolia in. And that's grounded onto short. Can't risk throwing home there. And we'll just get the guaranteed out. But it's another run that comes across for the Cubs. Now 2-0 Chicago. I like how I made fun of Nick Pavetta's high ERA. And currently he's got a no-hitter through three and a third. Tovar also grounding softly out. Now it's up to Barry Cohen to maybe get a base hit here in the fourth. How are we going to put up 15 and potentially get no hit the day after? That's crazy. I guess I could blame the fact that half of the lineup that was in yesterday is not in today. Well, we're not getting no hit. We're also not getting shut out. Barry Cohen deep to left center. And it's the first hit of the day for the Rockies. And it's good for a run as well. Barry Cohen is second on the season. 104 off the bat. Over 400 feet, long gone. You gotta love when your first hit of the day equals your first run of the day as well. Oh man, Verdugo gets a hold of one as well. Is this gonna be back-to-back -back homers? It's deep and it's gone. Alex Verdugo goes deep on the very next at bat. And it's two to two here in Chicago. Two home runs from the Rockies. Ties this one up. Verdugo saying, anything you can do, I can do better, Barry Cohen. Maybe Yanquil Fernandez can make it three home runs in a row. That's asking a lot, but we've seen stranger things in the MLB. Fernandez does get a pretty good knock on that one, but definitely not a home run. Two back-to-back -back homers, though, for the Rockies means that we're all tied up. That one somehow gets past Barry Cohen. I don't know how you're not fielding that, Barry. No, you're not the best fielder, but that seemed grabbable. Say a Suzuki will reach with a single. Oh, Cohen gets a hold of that one, though, and we'll go for the double play. And back to Cohen, two gone in the inning. All right, you made up for it, my friend. They're changing pitchers already, huh? Caleb Killian will come in. Nick Pavetta does only have 60 stamina. So yeah, four innings pitched is about what he can do. That's what concerns me about trading for a guy like Garrett Crochet, who I obviously talked about in last episode. The 60 stamina just means he's never really going to be able to go more than five innings. I don't know why I'm swinging at that cutter. It also seems like Crochet probably doesn't sim very well. So I'm thinking that we probably don't do that trade as Tolia swings and misses. There's a lot of factors to consider when trading in MLB The Show. Sterling will ground to third. That should be an easy second out. Well, lucky for us, Michael King has 76 stamina and will absolutely get to continue for now. Having a pretty good outing, just the two runs given up. Ball four to Matt Shaw, and we've got a leadoff base runner for the Cubs. Miguel Amaya, who was pinch hitting there, gets a base knock on the third pitch he sees. Now we face Andy Thomas with two runners on, nobody out. That's a grounder to Cohen. Looks like we're going to get a double play out of it again, and we do. Two gone in the inning immediately. Barry Cohen always picking up those 3-6-3 three, three double plays. Dansby Swanson gets a hold of this one. It's pretty deep to right, but Tolia underneath it, and that'll end the fifth. So a scary start to the inning, but ultimately no runs come across. The Rockies with two hits and two home runs. That's the only reason we're in this game. Can we get a base hit here? Maybe Ahmed Rosario first pitch swinging, just slightly mistimed. Ezekiel Tovar will pop softly to center. I don't think that's going to fall in. It won't. So a very quiet top of the sixth for the Rockies offense. I feel like this game has kind of been a snooze fest outside of the two home runs. Michael King will continue here in the sixth. Grounder to second. Rosario will make the play. There's out number one. Swing and a miss from Nico Horner on the slurve. There's out number two and strikeout number three for King. I just noticed that Seiya Suzuki is batting a 448 so far this year. Swing and a miss on the slurve. That 448 comes down a tiny bit. So six good innings of work from Michael King, and I think the best he can do is a no decision at this point. Barry Cohen grounds onto second. It's bobbled with a bit, but Cohen not fast enough to punish. 
Verdugo will actually get a base hit. They had a little bit of a shift, it looks like, going there. Second baseman not in his normal spot. And it's a base knock for Alex Verdugo, his second of the day. Young Keel Fernandez currently batting a sub 100. Let's see if he can get that back under control. Young Keel hits this one fairly deep to left, but the left fielder did not have to go all that far. There's out number two. If Fernandez continues to struggle the way he is right now, we'll probably send him back to AAA, at least temporarily. He's definitely a big part of the future of this team, but I don't want to hurt his development. You got to remember, I think he's only 23. No way Verdugo gets thrown. He gets picked off at first. That's crazy. What are we doing with the base running? Verdugo, you have 54 speed. You're not going to steal. I would let Michael King go another batter at a time, similar to what I did with Dolander, but in a 2-2 tie, we can't really risk that. Here's Jose Quijada. And back up the middle from Morel, and that'll be a leadoff single for the Cubbies. This game kind of hangs in the balance at this point. I mean, one run is all it's going to take, really, for either team. So any base runner at all is a scary prospect. Can we double this up? Not quite, but we do get the slightly faster Morel at second. I think that was a worthwhile fielder's choice. Now it's Matt Shaw at the plate facing Quijada. Swings and misses on the circle change. Looking for another double play ball, of course, would be ideal. This one's going to be popped to right. Should be no problem for Tolia, and it is no problem. Two gone and a runner on for the Cubs. Quijada faces Miguel Amaya. And I guess I was mistaken earlier when I said Amaya pinch hit. I could have sworn a graphic popped up saying he was pinch hitting, but I guess I was wrong because he's one for two. So he's had at least two at bats. And his last at bat would have been that pinch hit one I mentioned. As there is out number three in the seventh. We haven't had a single base runner today, it feels like. Have we had a walk? I'm not sure if we have. We've had the two solo home runs. Samuel Basayo is going to break that up. He finally will give us a base runner. He's headed to second, even though that throw got cut off. I mean, hit got cut off, rather, as Basayo will reach second base. And it brings up Ahmed Rosario, a pretty good guy to have at the plate with a runner in scoring position. He's 0 for 3 today, but could break up the tie here. Rosario to left. It's not going to get down out number 3. Definitely feels like the next team to score is going to end up winning this game. Grounder onto Thompson at third. Long throw makes it easily. Love Sterling Thompson's level of play out in the field. Strike three looking on Dansby Swanson. A great circle change from Quijada. Josh Stalmont to the mound for the Cubs. Hopefully he's the guy to give us a run. He faces Luis Arise first. A good way to start for us. And that is a base hit. Exactly what you want from Arise. And that'll bring up Ezekiel Tovar. Normally Nolan Jones' spot. Today it's Tovar. It's also a 10-game hitting streak for Luis Arise. Ezekiel is 0 for 3 on the day. Now would be the time for a base knock. They are playing the third baseman very far in. I think they think a sacrifice is coming. I don't plan to do that with Tovar. He's too talented of a hitter. You know what I should definitely be doing, though, is pinch running for Luis. I don't know why I didn't think of that until just now. Doyle will come into pinch run for Luis Arise. And we'll have to have Brendan Rodgers come in to play short for the rest of the game if it continues. Which, of course, it will if we take the lead. 3-1 count with Barry Cohen on deck. One of the two people to give us a run so far today. Tovar will look at a pitch. I thought I was going to be low. That makes the count full. Three balls, two strikes. Stamon's pitch is on the way, and I swung so late. I thought I was going to break more out of the zone. It didn't. Strike three on Tovar brings up Barry Cohen. Doyle takes off. We try to protect him. We're going to get doubled up anyway because it was just hit that hard by Barry Cohen. And down go the Rockies. So Rogers has to come in and finish the day at shortstop. And then Doyle has been moved to center field, just making our fielding a little bit better. Quijada, of course, not going to stay in the game. We're going to bring in Jonathan Luizaga, who has been not great so far this year. 
popped to center where Doyle is patiently waiting. Did not have to move very far. Out number one. Swing and a miss from Seiya Suzuki. A great slur from Loisga. That's two gone. Rounder to Rogers. Now it's short. And that'll end the ninth. So we head to extras yet again. Can the Rockies get some runs in the top of the tenth? The runner is Barry Cohen. And it is Verdugo at the plate. And he gets a decent one to hit. It's relatively deep to center, but shallow enough. I don't feel comfortable sending Barry Cohen, that's for sure. And now it's Brendan Rodgers at the plate. Was supposed to have a day off today. Needed him. Two balls, one strike to Brendan Rodgers. A base hit not necessarily guaranteed to score Cohen. And does that miss badly? No way does Rodgers pop that to shallow left center. Out number two. Two. I didn't want to have to do it, but here comes Nolan Jones. He's going to pinch hit for Michael Tolia. Obviously not playing super great so far this year, but definitely believe in him getting this run home more than I believe in Tolia getting the run home. Two balls, one strike to Nolan. Stalmont's pitch on the way, very low. Makes it 3-1. Will he give Nolan something to hit or will he walk him? He's going to walk him, which is honestly the wise decision. Because now he faces Sterling Thompson, who is not nearly as good with a runner in scoring position. Thompson 0 for 3 today, batting only a 214 so far this season. There's ball number one. Now in a two strike count, probably not going to get a good one to hit, but has to defensive swing anyway. Will that fall in? It actually does. Cohen will hold up at third, probably for the best. Bases are loaded. And the next guy to the plate is Samuel Basayo. And they're going to bring in Adbert Alzali into the game. Basayo does not have that high of a clutch rating as far as I remember. Only 50, which is worse than his regular contact. Some of you might be screaming at me to bring in Mejia, who does have a higher clutch rating. But in my experience, Basayo gets stuff done in these positions more often than not. Of course, we can afford to be very patient as well. A walk scores a run all the same. No way I swing it. That disgusting slider with Basayo after talking him up. And that'll end the top part of the 10th. So now it's up to Loisiga to keep the Cubs off the board with a runner in scoring position. This definitely heavily favors the Cubs at this point. Nolan Jones is going to have to throw home to end the game it's safe at the plate from the cubs nolan jones was very slow to come up with that ball i swear the cubs win off of a kevin alcantara base hit not really loisaga's fault but he's mad at himself why was nolan jones so slow to come up with that throw is it because he's tired he got most of the day off like look at how slow he was here gave himself a whole step just didn't have that kind of time he has a huge arm that's part of why i left him out there in right field but a loss for the rockies I got to tell you, the 15-2 victory the day before actually made me a little nervous coming into this game because it really felt like we dumped all of our offense into that one game. And that sort of remained true. Sterling Thompson got a hit. Basayo got a hit. Verdugo Cohen with a hit. Arise with a hit. But a bunch of zeros on the board. Only two walks on the day. Michael King had a good outing, a quality outing. Loisaga does give up that run, but it does not count as an earned run. I think we're going to win games like that more often than not. Just the offense couldn't do anything today outside of the couple solo home runs. So let's simulate a little bit to end the episode. Sim just through this series against the Yankees. And then we'll probably do this four-game set against the Giants. Oviedo with a shutout through eight innings. We'll simulate to the end, and we win 3-0 over the New York Yankees. Not a lot of hits for the Rockies either. Barry Cohen with another home run, two RBIs for him. And Oviedo going nine full innings, 12 strikeouts. Johan, if you can give me that every week... Yes, please. These Yankees are 15 and five, by the way. They were 15 and four heading into that game. Rockies just two games over 500. Can we beat the Yankees two in a row? Well, it's looking like we've got a chance. We end up losing that game, really. Soroka was looking to get another shutout, gave up three in the top part of the ninth. And it was actually Helsley that ends up with the loss because he gave up the third earned run. Only two earned runs for Soroka. It was a really good outing. Just no offense again. Cohen draws two walks. 
but no hits. Got a hit from Rosario and Arise. This offense is weird right now. Time for some scouting. We've learned a little bit about a guy named Josh Foster. He's like the top starting pitcher in this class, though. We don't really have a chance to get him. Rafael Vasquez is a guy that we do have a chance to get, and he's kind of what I'm looking for in a potential first baseman. Although he's a horrendous fielder, he's got very high power. It looks like he's going to be very bad at the start, though, based on what I can tell. With all these attributes being so low, I'm guessing that he's going to be like a 50s overall guy with very high potential. Here's Greg Zbzinski, I think is how you say his name. I'm a fan of Greg. 75 to 93 potential, has high stamina. Hits per nine is a little low, but future projections look pretty good. And otherwise is just a very balanced player that's not gonna walk a lot and he has good pitch break. Jason Kaiser is a first base prospect I like a lot and he can play catcher, which is very interesting. I talked about the fact that Basaya, while a very good player, may not necessarily be be the catcher of the future because his ceiling is quite low. If Jason Kaiser has a higher ceiling, he could play catcher. It's a good fielder with a good arm, good reactions, and he's got big time power. I like Jason Kaiser a lot. The more I look at him, the more I like him. But the 67 to 95 potential range is a little concerning. What if the guy has super, super low potential? But so far, he is who I'm leaning to for our first round pick. Despite the fact that he's dropping so far in the Rockies draft, board all the way down to 36. The catchers that we scouted are falling out of our top 100. Oliver Collado still looks like a really solid player, but he is absolutely tanked down our draft board. Obviously might need to know a little bit more about him, but the potential seems to be falling off a cliff. Only 60 to 88 now. Still has what looks to be big time power with really good fielding though. Just seems like none of the catchers are all that good in this year's draft class. The only guy left in the top 100 100 is Thad McManus, and he's not necessarily the archetype I'm looking for. It looks like he's mostly a fielding catcher with some power. He definitely doesn't look bad by any means. So here's what we're going to do this week. We're going to scout Jason Kaiser straight up. He'll be at 85% scouted once that is done. And we're also going to scout Thad McManus, and he will be 100% scouted once we're done. And we'll see if he's even really worth considering. Here's another starting pitcher that has actually climbed up our scouting board. That's Ivan Valenzuela. 79 to 92 potential. He is 22 years old already, but it looks like he's going to be a solid overall right out the gate. He is another right-handed pitcher though, with just high walks per nine. Velo is going to be above average, break above average, and good stamina. Not really what I'm looking for, but at the very least, he's a guy that we could consider if we're later in the draft and don't really have much else to choose from. We're going to go all in on scouting individual players for this week. I just want to learn about my top two guys and then see if Thad McManus is worth anything. And then we'll probably go back to a little bit more broad scouting. Will we win the final game against the Yankees with Satchel Page on the mound? We do actually two to one over the Yankees. I'm telling you guys, I just can't play ever as Satchel Page. Otherwise, he's so, so good. Seven innings pitched, seven strikeouts, four walks, one earned run. Good day from Satchel Page. But we've seen it on the channel time and time again. When I play as him, it's brutal. I won't completely avoid him because he is a fun player. I think we should definitely watch him from time to time, but I'm definitely scarred. So the Rockies end up winning a series against a very, very good New York Yankees team that is now 16 and 6. Rockies 13 and 11, which is good for second in the NL West currently. The Dodgers are 19 and 4. We are three of those losses at the very beginning of the season. They have lost one game since. Look at this month from the Dodgers. They swept us and then swept the Mets, lost one game against Boston, swept Washington, swept San Diego. Now they play the Braves, which is another very good team. They're 14 and eight. I guess they did have easy matchups for the most part. Boston is not like a pushover, but they're not great. New York's pretty bad. Washington's bad. We're pretty mid to maybe slightly above average. San Diego evidently is bad, eight and 15. So they were easy matchups, but man, to win basically all of them, except for one against Boston is crazy. Well, I didn't really anticipate winning the NL West at any point this season. That would have taken kind of a miracle, but we are two games above 500, which is exactly what I need to keep my job. If we can finish 82 and 80, the series can continue. But anyway, thank you guys so much for
for watching and for the continued support. I'm having an absolute blast with this series. It is the most fun I've had with a series at any point. So I do appreciate your guys' support. I'll see you in the next episode where we'll try to put a dent in the six and a half games back on the Dodgers.